What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. Today's video is the final video going over the radio configuration section for Meshtastic where we'll be covering the LoRa configuration page. We'll go over what LoRa is, take a look at a LoRa signal, go through the configuration options and discuss which options are best for different situations. So join me as we dig into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. At the core of Meshtastic's communication is LoRa, which stands for Long Range. And LoRa uses a digital modulation technique called Chirp Spread Spectrum that makes LoRa receivers extremely sensitive, which allows for the decoding of signals well beneath the noise floor to achieve long range communication at low power. There's a number of great videos that take a really deep technical look at LoRa, and I'll link to those in the video description. For this video though, I'll give a brief explanation of LoRa so we can have a better understanding of what these settings are doing. So let's take a look at a LoRa signal on my SDR here. You'll notice what looks like a bunch of forward and backslashes on the SDR's waterfall. These are the up chirps and down chirps of the chirp spread spectrum that LoRa uses. If you have a good eye, you may notice something familiar about these chirps and how they appear on the waterfall here. These chirps used by LoRa are what inspired the Meshtastic logo. The chirps either shift up or down in frequency over time. The up chirps shift up in frequency and the down chirps shift down. And we can see that here in the SDR waterfall. So here we have up chirps and you can see how they're going up in frequency and then we have these two down chirps and you can see where they're going down in frequency over time. The signal starts with a series of up chirps called the preamble. And what this is doing is getting the attention of the receivers and letting them know that data is about to be sent. That's followed by two down chirps that are part of a sync word process that allows it to distinguish itself from lower signals that aren't from Meshtastic. That will then be followed by the data containing the message. LoRa is very adaptable due to a variety of configuration options, and if we take a look at the LoRa config page on the Meshtastic app, we'll see these options if we turn off the Use Modem Preset Toggle switch. Here we have Bandwidth, Spread Factor, and Coding Rate. All of these settings are going to have some effect on how far, how fast, and how reliable of a signal you're going to get. The Meshtastic developers have made life easy and provided a list of modem preset options that we can see when we flip the use modem preset back on. These modem presets have various different bandwidth, spread factor, and coding rates pre-configured for different needs ranging from short range and fast communication to very long range and slow communication. But to better understand what these are doing, let's take a deeper look and start off with looking at bandwidth. What this bandwidth setting does is set the speed the signal changes and how much potential data can be sent. If we look at our SDR here, we can see the chirps are currently set to a bandwidth of about 11 kilohertz. This isn't a typical bandwidth option that you'll run into with LoRa, and this is just for demonstration purposes to show the chirps better. They'll become harder to see as we change these settings later on. The typical lower bandwidth settings you'll run into are 125 kHz, 250 kHz, and 500 kHz. But in the predefined modem presets in Meshtastic, you'll see 62.5 kHz, 125 kHz, and 250 kHz bandwidth. So while we're currently at 11 kHz bandwidth, take note of the current speed of the chirps and let's up the bandwidth a bit and see how it changes. Now we can see the chirps are a bit faster and the bandwidth is about 16 kilohertz now. Let's continue to up the bandwidth. Now at about 21 kilohertz, the chirps continue getting faster. And next I'll quickly go through the rest of these so you can see the difference in how fast the chirps are going as the signal gets wider with the increases in bandwidth.
You may have also noticed that as the bandwidth increased, the time it took for the data to go through was shorter each time. So basically, the higher the bandwidth, the higher the data rate, and the lower the bandwidth, the lower the data rate. The other side of that coin is that the higher the data rate, the less range you'll get. So if you need more range, you'll need to use a lower bandwidth and make that sacrifice for speed to get more range. The next setting we have is spread factor. What this setting does is set how quick the chirp should go over the bandwidth we have set and can be set from anywhere from 5 to 12. The higher this number is, the further your signal can be received due to it being easier for the receiver to decode. This of course also comes at the cost of speed, just like with the bandwidth setting. You will always have to compromise speed for distance. So let's go back to the SDR and set it back to the 11 kilohertz bandwidth we started with. Then we'll go through the different spreading factors to see how the signal changes. We'll start off with 12 and work our way down. The final setting is coding rate. Changing this setting won't have quite as obvious of an effect on the waterfall like the previous settings, but we can see changing this setting will change the length of the transmission. That's because what this setting does is adjust the error correction and what it does is send extra redundant data in the signal so the receiver has a better chance of getting the data it needs while breaking through the noise. These settings are in ratios from 4 fifths to 4 eighths. 4 fifths will send the least amount of redundant data and 4 eighths will send the most. More redundant data being sent means there's a better chance for the receiver to successfully decode the message, which means more potential for increased range. This again comes at the cost of speed as these transmissions take longer with the extra data being sent. Now that we have a better understanding of what's happening behind the scenes, let's flip the switch for use modem presets back on. Here again we see various different modem presets available to choose from. Meshtastic has info on their docs page with how each of these presets correlate to the configuration options like spread factor, coding rate, and bandwidth we just discussed. What these different configurations add up to is different link budgets, which is how sensitive the receiver will be based on these settings. More link budget equates to more range, but of course at the cost of speed. So what should you choose? And this will entirely depend on your situation and needs. For most people, the default of long range fast is going to be fine. And it's a nice balance of range and speed. This is also the setting you need to be on if you want to talk to other people on the default public channel. All devices need to be on the same lore settings in order to communicate. If your deployment is just going to consist of you and some other people around your neighborhood or part of town, then you can probably get away with the fastest setting of short fast. If your deployment is going to be more spread out than that, then you may need one of the slower long range options. I'd recommend starting out with the default settings and then experiment from there to see what gets you the most solid communications at the best speed. Moving down the list here, we have frequency offset, and this is just for advanced users with test equipment that need to adjust the frequency due to calibration errors. Next we have region, which you're likely already familiar with at this point. This is where you set your location for the appropriate frequencies. Then there's a setting for hop limit. The default is 3, but this can be anything from 0 to 7. Similar to how packets work on the internet, or if you're familiar with digipeters in the ham radio world, each transmission will have a decrementing value so signals don't constantly get repeated forever. The default hop limit is 3 and is what we'll use for an example. 
When you send a message from your device, it will have a hop value of three. Then when the next device rebroadcasts the message, it will decrement this value and rebroadcast it with a value of two. Then the next device, a value of one. And then finally, there will be a broadcast with a value of zero. And any device that receives a message with a hop value of zero will not rebroadcast it. Now you may be tempted to use seven for this to get the maximum number of hops, but a hop number this high will generally only lead to network congestion. So leaving this as the recommended default of three should be fine for most people. Moving on down the list, we have a toggle switch for TX. This just enables your device to send transmissions. Next we have TX power and TX by the way stands for transmit. So we have TX power and this can be left as the default unless you have a reason to not use the maximum transmitting power. Then we have channel number and this can be left as is in most cases and this gets set automatically by the modem preset but you can change this yourself if needed. The Meshtastic docs page has a handy calculator where you can see what frequency is set by the settings on this configuration page if needed. Then below that we have a toggle switch for override duty cycle. This isn't applicable in the US and is for Europe. They have regulations on the ISM band that limit devices from transmitting too much and Meshtastic has an hourly limit set to prevent devices from violating regulations. If you're in Europe, just know that enabling this may cause you to violate the regulations if your device ends up transmitting more than the permitted amount. Next we have ignore incoming with an add button. This is for testing purposes and allows you to ignore certain nodes to simulate them being out of range. And you can enter in up to three node numbers that you like to ignore. Moving down the list, we have a toggle switch for SX126X or X boosted gain. For devices that have the SX126X series of chips in them, this turns on the capability to have increased receiver sensitivity, which means increased range. We then finally have the override frequency option. This allows you to manually set the frequency instead of using what is automatically set for you based on the chosen lower settings. This settings for advanced users and ham radio operators. That will conclude the Meshtastic radio configuration portion of this series and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so and join me for the rest of this advanced Meshtastic series. Thank you all and have a good one.